Hi, welcome back to the Brittany Bond podcast. This is Brittany Bond, and I'm so excited to record this one for you guys today. Um, last week, Faraday and I, my boyfriend and I, recorded this really beautiful podcast where we talked about being in love and and just our journey together, finding each other <laughs> in other dimensions and then finding each other in this timeline, and it was so beautiful, and I felt so in my feminine, and I had so many of you guys reach out, so many that were so like giving lots of words of love and encouragement and support and I'm really grateful for all of that and also a lot of you reached out especially women that were like wow you are so in your feminine and um you just seem so happy and and I, how can I do you have any tips on how that was for you and how you got there and anything that you can share with us on how we can be more in our feminine. And I was like, wow, I'm super inspired to make a podcast about this because it's really, it's been a journey for me. You know, it's not like you just pop out and you're like, okay, we're here. We're like fully in our feminine and receiving and like fully in our pleasure and like really enjoying everything. It's like, no, I mean, at least for me, my timeline was um, a roller coaster, as we say a very beautiful one and a beautiful journey with many adventures and there's a lot of things I learned along the way through my own trial and error Um, and it's gotten me to where I am now which is I feel very fully in my power and also and and what that means for me is being very deeply in my feminine and I call it being in the divine feminine so what does being in the divine feminine even mean it means for me like you know, our souls, we decided to come into these timelines. We all have masculine and feminine energy inside of us. And then for whatever reason, we chose to be, you know, born a woman or a man or whatever. And um, for me, I chose to come in as a woman and I feel very connected to my femininity and I'm very grateful um, that I came in on this timeline as a woman. And I feel very powerful in it. And... uh, yeah, but we are born into a world where, you know, in a lot of ways it's run by um, the very masculine energy and very masculine way of doing things. And, and and to come into our full power, we have to really look at a lot of these things and, and honor them and let them go through us and then choose which parts we want to integrate and which parts we want to change in our lives. And so this podcast is very much about all of that. And it's about like just looking at it, honoring it, and then choosing which part do you want to play in all of it. Because I view our lives as a game, like one big video game. And we all have different parts to play. And, you know, in order to come into our full power, we have to understand how things are played. Like in the bigger cosmos, like the macro video game, and then our micro timeline of how we want to play into all of that. So, yeah, for me, being in the divine feminine means understanding who I am, like, as myself, and really being in love with myself as an individual soul, and then understanding how I can play into the bigger timeline, and, like, how I can show up and serve in my, in my personal life, and also in, like, the macro, like, in the bigger timeline, and wow, I'm so excited, (laughs) I feel like I... I have like jumped many quantum leaps and learned many things and I really, really am grateful for the timeline that I'm on and I'm so grateful for all the beautiful men and women in my life that I share my life with and my inner journey with and and I would love to impart some of this learnings to you guys and then you can tell me what you think about it and, <laughs> and then we can all keep growing and learning together because I do not have it all figured out. I just know... Uh, I learned a couple things and I want to share them with you and then I'd love to hear what you guys think. So I made some notes and I'm going to bounce off some of these notes and elaborate and then keep going. So (laughs) in the very feminine way, these notes are not in order. (laughs) And I think that in the, just come on this journey with me and you will understand that the feminine is very much about not getting to the point. It's about enjoying the journey along the way and making it so much fun and so juicy. So to begin, I invite you to take a really, really nice deep breath with me because we're going to come into our bodies first. 
And whenever I start one of these podcasts, I get so excited. I'm so excited to share all this with you. And the most important thing I found is that for all of us to really enjoy it is for us to be grounded. So when you're ready, I invite you to let all your air out, like, and then take a really deep breath where you're like breathing into your stomach first and then your chest and then all the way up through your head. So, and then at the top, hold it for a couple seconds. <coughs> and then let out whatever needs to get let out because sometimes it brings stuff up. So, and then br- when you sigh, when you breathe out, sigh out as much air as you can and as much sound as you can. So I'll do it one more time with you. <sighs> and just notice like whatever sensations are coming up in your body and just honor all of them and accept all of them and know that you are so loved by myself and the universe and yourself and everyone in your life that loves you and just allow all of that love in and receive and receive all of it so for me being the divine feminine is receiving in a way that creates more connection around me because we are raised in a society where we are told that we have to do things in order to receive things And I don't agree with that. I think, well, I don't agree with that in the sense that I think that that's a very masculine energy. And I think I love, (laughs) if you know me, you know that I am a doer. I like, I'm always doing like so many things, but a lot of times, most of the things get done by me speaking to the universe. Oh, I would love this. I would love to have a community of soul tribe around me. And I would love to have a home base on the island where we have our community space and everyone lives together, like all my inner crew, we all live together and we can vibe together. And I just like speak this out loud. And then what happens is synchronistically through the universe, these people will get drawn into my life. My soul tribe is all gathering here on Copanyang and through synchronicity, like the place that I would really love to take over and have as our community hub and our resort, it's like coming to me and like people know people who I didn't realize were connected. They reach out to me and they're like, I actually know the owner and I can connect you to them. And da, 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 da. and like so many things are getting done in the 3d world. And what I'm doing in the 3d world is receiving and I'm really, really honoring the energy and I'm getting super juicy about it within my body. And I'm like super ex- grateful and like all this positive energy you know and that is so attractive like the universe wants us to be in our pleasure as women and to be so the divine feminine for me is to be like we are living art this is what my friend Rosanna says like we are the end game and the more that we realize this the more that we can honor ourselves and be in our bodies and it receive that with joy and appreciation and love that's the energy we send out and that is so attractive to everyone around us and to the universe and everything just comes to us this might sound super easy and this might sound almost too simple i will tell you that on my timeline i've tried it all the other ways like i um when I was younger, I studied law and psychology in university. And um, in, when I was in high school, um, I actually took university classes in high school. So I tested out of fir- my first two years of university. And I grew up in California, and we call it um, the, our undergraduate studies. So like basically the first two years where you have to do your general studies at uni, I already had tested out of those. So when I graduated high school, also I graduated when I was 16, because I skipped a grade so like I was always reading and I, I love learning and I already like was ready to go but in my family situation if you haven't listened to my earlier podcast please do because they talk about how I was raised in a cult and it was not encouraged to go to higher education for various reasons and so I graduated high school and I had I had all of these credits, like I could test out of schools, universities were wanting to recruit me, but my parents didn't want me to go to university, which is a really interesting thing, right? And so I didn't know what to do. And I ended up getting married at 18, because it's also the culture and the cult that I was raised in. And I started working at Starbucks, (laughs) which is so funny, because I didn't even drink coffee at the time when I started working there. And 
through synchronicity, through synchronicity, I got connected to um, someone that had a, a exotic car dealership, like Range Rovers and Porsches. He kept coming into my work, and I love cars. I love really nice cars, and so I would always ask him, like, "Can I, can I drive your cars? Like, can I test drive the cars on my break?" And so he would let me do that. And then he was like, "You're such a go getter, and like, you're so like." bubbly and nice like do you want to come work for me and I was like yeah sure and then I started working for him and then uh, <laughs> you know also being a beautiful young woman like th it didn't work out for me working for him because he wanted to sleep with me and like all this stuff and I just was still fully my power I was like no I'm married and like this is not gonna work uh, and then he ended up laying me like he ended up letting me go and so I went into in the United States, we have it. It's called like Department of Workforce Services. It's basically like unemployment office. And I was in there and I was like, I'm filing for unemployment and I don't know what to do. And the guy at the front desk, I'm like, I think I'm 18 at this point. And he was like, do you want to go to university? And I looked at him and I was like, yeah, I would love to go to university. But as you can see, I do not have money for this. And, you know, my family's not supportive of this. And I'm working at a coffee shop, you know, and he was like, okay, well, I'm looking at your grades here. I'm looking at all your credits. Like, I think we can support you on this because we have this grant program, which is basically the government helps support people, young people who want to go to university and get placed in jobs. And so he, he connected with me with some of their resource officers there. And I talked to the woman and she was like, okay, yeah, we're going to make a plan for you. You're going to go to university. And also we're going to immediately place you working in the law firm. So at 18, <laughs> I started working in a law firm and I would go to university at night and um, I loved it. I was like, wow, because I was also still in my cult at the same time. So I had to like hide it. And but I was so excited to learn. And I remember when I worked in the Starbucks, I was like all these people that came in had office jobs and they seemed very important. And I was like, I want to be one of those people, you know, but I didn't know how to get there because I didn't know how the world worked. And like I was very sheltered. And suddenly the world was opening up to me and like um, they even like paid for my books. They paid for clothes so that I could have like nice clothes to work in the office. And and I just like worked my butt off. I, I worked all day long. I went to school at night. And then so I worked in a law firm for six years. And the last place I ended up working was in New York City. Um, and <laughs> it was just so funny because there was... I didn't understand why I was so, I mean, I love learning and I, but I, I ended up working in intellectual property law, which just means like patents and trademarks and, uh, like I, it's called IP law. So it pays really well. It's also not my highest excitement, <laughs> but at the time I was like, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to grind. And like, you know, I'd wake up and be on a train for an hour in New York just to get to the office. I worked across the street from Grand Central Station and and then I would be at work for however long, like eight or nine hours, and then I would take it, the train an hour home and then I I was so stressed out that I got like like a it's called shingles, which is like this nervous it's um it's an autoimmune disease where you start getting kind of like, it's like a later phase version of chicken pox. And it's basically like these red spots all over your body and it causes nerve damage. And I had to get on morphine. And, and I remember telling my work, like I need to work. I mean, I need to take a break. And they were like, no, 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 you can just work from home. So I just remember like taking morphine pills because I was in so much pain. I hated taking medication, but I didn't know what else to do. And then I would just be at my, in bed, like working on my laptop and just, just like moaning because I was in so much pain and I couldn't even think straight. And I was just like, this is what, um, this is what the world says you're supposed to do. And I, I really hated it. And, um, and then I had always at the same time was trying to help all of the law firms I worked for go paperless because secretly I've always wanted to work remotely. And one of them finally let me do this. And, um, it's around the same time that I was getting divorced and I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go. Like, even if they don't let, like, even if they don't let me, I've saved some money. I'm going to go to Costa Rica. And they ended up letting me, um, work remotely because uh, I'd help them go paperless. And this is like in 2014. So people were not working remotely. I didn't, there's a term called digital nomad, which is like you can work online and travel. I didn't, this term, as far as I knew in my reality bubble didn't exist at that moment because I didn't know it. I didn't know anyone else was working, who was working online. Again, you have to understand I grew up in a very sheltered environment. 
And so I moved to Costa Rica. I'd never lived there before. I didn't know anyone there. I just found this little like hostel that I thought had Wi-Fi. It didn't have Wi-Fi. So I was like running around this small little surf town, like trying to find Wi-Fi and sitting outside in like these really hot like hotel lobbies that just had a fan and I was just sweating all day long. And I was still working like eight or nine hours a day for my law firm and just being like, but I was living at least in an environment where my body could relax and I would work all day long and then I would go home and just cry. Like it was like my body was starting to wake up to what it needed. It was no, like I had suppressed my needs and my nervous system for so long that it had become numb. And I didn't know, I didn't know this because when you're just in this, like you have to get up and do it, you know, you're kind of in the survival hustle mode. And slowly my nervous system started to feel safe and I started to drop into my body more. And I just remember thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm in paradise right now. Like I'm living literally in paradise where most people, you know, spend one week a year and I'm here for months and months. And I, and I was like, I have the life that I want here, but I'm not actually living the life that I want. Like I loved living in Costa Rica um, but I didn't necessarily like what I how I had to work because it still was really hard on my nervous system and then I realized more and more it wasn't my highest excitement and then I just realized okay my I I need to figure out a transition point of this so I thought I'm gonna go live and work in New York City for a set amount of time and in that I call it building my life raft like you're on a cruise the cruise ship is, you know, the cruise ship is going somewhere you don't want to go, but you need to build your life raft to get off so that you don't just jump in this, the ocean and, you know, drown or whatever. And so I, when I was in New York, I saved all of my money. I got the lo- highest law firm job, the highest paying law firm job I could find. And I, Like I only got caught like Starbucks on Fridays. I would bring my, I would like pack my salads and bring my lunch to work every single day. And like everyone around me at my office was like spending money on, on their lunch because they hated their life. Right. So they were just like, I'm going to go buy this thing and I'm going to go eat out every single day. And just, they're basically in the rat race of not really enjoying their lifestyle, but not knowing how to get out. And so just spending money in order to feel good temporarily. And I was like, no, 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 I have the end goal. Like I'm going to get out, out. And so I had a little sticky note on my desk and it was like all the money in my savings. And no one knew what this was, but it was just like a plus of my savings. And I had a little bit of debt I needed to pay off. And every single week I got paid weekly, I would add to the plus and then my, you know, subtract from the minus. And synchronistically during that time period, I met some people who were starting a travel company for uh, people who were wanted to work remotely. So I partnered with them and they started traveling around with the group. So it was like 30 or 40 people who worked online. They came with their, their, those, those people basically paid us like we were at the time Airbnb wasn't, was just starting, but it was kind of like an Airbnb experience. So we would figure out where to live. We would host them like 30 or 40 at digital nomads. And then we would plan fun things to do in the town that we ended up in, you know, all over Europe, we would go to different countries. And so eventually I started, I left, I left my law firm job and started traveling with them. And this is where my journey started. And I've been traveling ever since. And so that was in, I think 2016. And then slowly through that, I built my life where my nervous system was happier and happier. My body was happier and happier with me. And it was a, it was a journey, you know, it wasn't like I woke up, like the moment I woke up to, I don't want this life anymore. And then the moment where I was living my life, it was a journey. And I, so I don't want you guys to listen to this and be like, okay, I need to just (laughs) stop everything because that's also really hard for your nervous system. You can put yourself in like a panic mode where you realize what you don't want, but you don't necessarily know how to get to what you need to go. Um, So be gentle with yourself. You'll get there. And also really, really allow in the life that you want to come into your visions and your dreams and your manifesting and your journaling. So I remember... 
the thing that kind of saved my sanity when I was living those last couple of years in New York and I knew I already had lived in Costa Rica. I knew I wanted to get out, out of the matrix was I would go on these runs and I lived in uh, upper Manhattan and in the morning and then when I come home from work, I would go on these runs and they had this like kind of forest area along the river in upper Harlem and I would just run and I would listen to this music and I would just visualize myself <laughs> living in Thailand. I Thailand was always calling me like since I was little and I I didn't know if it was specifically Thailand, but I knew I wanted to be in a tropical com- country. So I would just be in my headphone, like, you know, in my own zone, like this manifesting zone. And I would visualize myself running. Like I love, I love running and jogging and, and being in motion. And I would visualize myself doing it in a tropical country where it was warm and everything was so lush and beautiful. And then when I was doing that, like there was this vibrational disconnect because you know they say you only can match the reality of the vibration that you're on right and so in order to in order to get on that all of this I was doing super intuitively uh, in order to get on that vibration where I could match that reality I would whisper to myself in my head or I'd whisper out loud to myself while I was running I am worthy I am enough I love myself And it was just like this mantra over and over every single day for a year and a half. Just like, I am worthy. I am enough. I love myself. I deserve this. And every single day it got easier. Like when I first started saying that, I could hear my brain just going, you know, the ego or the doubts or whatever. And I was just like, no, I deserve better than this. I know that I can have the life that feels good for me. And maybe it's not the life that everyone wants, but this is the life. And I knew it was so much bigger than what I was living right then. For me, I knew because I wanted to unfold into my full power. And in order to get on that vibration, I just kept saying, I am worthy. I am enough. I am worthy. I deserve this. I love myself. And, you know, it was just people on the outside heard me. Like, I was in the forest, so no one really heard me but I didn't care like I was just like I'm on my timeline I respect their timelines but my timeline is we are going places and so I didn't care to be the crazy girl that was running through Harlem (laughs) I just remember running by like all these gangsters you know on the doorstep selling drugs and I'm just this white girl just running by like I am enough I am worthy (laughs) and you could see like because people don't really run in Harlem because like you know if you're running it's usually because you're running away from something (laughs) and so when I would run by them the the first reaction was like scared because they're like who the fuck is running up against like up towards me and then the second reaction is like who is this crazy redhead girl just running around our neighborhood all day long, (laughs) whispering to herself. And I was just like, I don't care. And then, so I just kept going I kept going. And then, and then I matched the reality of the vibration that I knew that I deserved. And it was to synchronistically meet with these people who I started this company with to start traveling. And then even then people would message me, how do you have this lifestyle? How do you? And then at the time we were putting all of our money into the startup of the travel company. So all of my expenses and my travel expenses were paid, but I didn't have any cash flow coming in. And so even then I felt a little bit in scarcity mindset because, you know, most people, most of my friends, they have family to fall back on. They have they have money to fall back on. I didn't have any of that. And I was still like, I don't care. This is, I deserve this reality. This is what, and I just so believed in myself and I just really trusted the universe. I trusted myself and I trusted my power. I knew I was so powerful and I I am so powerful. And this is, I want to say all of this to you guys because a lot of people look at my life and they look at my life at least over the last 10 years when I've been traveling and they're like, she must be a trust fund baby, you know, like someone whose parents are paying for things or she must be a sugar baby, like someone who has a rich boyfriend who's paying for things. And I was just like, what if we could just have a reality where women are powerful and they go after what they want in a way that feels really good for their bodies and they can have and they receive and, you know, and I've had so much abundance, um, you monetarily come to me but the abundance comes in so many other ways it comes through a friend a friend of mine worked at the a friend of mine from high school that I've known since I was like 10 worked at uh one of the major airlines and he called me up out of the blue I hadn't spoken to him in years and was like Brittany I want to come start visiting you in all these places because he had free flights and so he started visiting me and then he's like Brittany do you want next year do you want my 
business class. Like I get to give one person like my plus one to be able to have business class for the year. And I was like, yes, thank you. Uh, and so suddenly I was flying business class everywhere and I just had to pay like a hundred dollars for the airport tax. And I was just like, you know, like this is the, this is the life that I've had. And it's because I know that I deserve this and I receive it in a way that is so nourishing for me and creates so much connection for everyone around me that I feel like the universe is like, okay, let's give her more. Like she's, cre- she's receiving this in such a beautiful way and she's creating such beautiful energy going outwards. Let's give her more. Let's like, let's make her life even more beautiful. And then COVID happened and I got, I serendipitously got, was called to come to Copanyang. I had only been here once before for a week for my birthday the year before. I knew the world was going to lock down. I was already traveling to like five different countries on three different continents from January of 2020 to March of 2020. And I was just like, I could feel, I can feel things intuitively. I could feel things were about to shut down. And I was trying to get as many countries in as I can, as many experiences in as I can. And then I was like, okay, I'm in South Africa they're bringing army trucks out and <laughs> pointing guns at people, telling them to get inside. I was like, no, 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 I'm not getting locked down here. Where do I want to go? Okay, going to Copanyang. And then since coming to Copanyang, I <laughs> I came here with a guy that I we already had decided that we were going to break up, but the world was suddenly falling apart. And so we still cared about each other, of course. And so we were like, let's just stay together until, you know, this calms down a little bit. Came to the island and you know, I was still working a lot. I had gone back into corporate consulting and um, I had been working for a company where they were based in Malaysia and they were flying me out a week, a month um, all over Asia to do like corporate consulting for these large companies. So imagine like Coca-Cola of Asia or FedEx of Asia. And I would go in and do like culture change workshops for like all of the CEOs and like put on my little pencil skirt and pretend like I wasn't a hippie Uh, and I was making really good money but I wasn't enjoying myself and then all of these I had done this TV YouTube show where I was like traveling around promoting remote work in 2019 like intuitively I knew that this was coming like remote work was the future this is like come on guys we can give people the option to work remotely and then when COVID hit like Suddenly my YouTube went viral. Everyone was like messaging me, wanting to have me consult their teams to work remotely. And so in March of 2020, in April of 2020, when the whole world, everyone was freaking out, people were like losing their jobs, all this stuff. I had the most work I had ever had. I was working like 12, 14 hour days, helping run all these teams and trying to make sure that they didn't fall apart because suddenly they were forced into remote work and they didn't know how to manage it. And so I was like this consultant that would go in and just be like, okay, this is how you onboard all your IT. Here's how you do the culture stuff within the office. Da, 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 da. Like kind of being the mom of everyone. I loved it. But my body was like calling me to come back to myself more and calling me to be more nourishing for myself. And I wasn't listening. I was like still in this hustle survival mode. Like if you, if you know how it feels to not have family to fall back on if you know how it feels where if you lose if you somehow don't have any more money like of course I had friends at the time that I could call to but I didn't have my soul family yet right and so I had this really strong survival that was coming out where I was like I need to keep making money because if I don't have money I literally could live on the streets and it felt so unsafe in my body and I felt so like constricted in my body you know and so it's funny it's so ironic that you know if you look at my social media and look at my YouTube everyone was like wow she must be a millionaire and she must have this beautiful and I did have this beautiful life and also the emotional reality of my body was very different it was very much like I need to make more money because if I don't then then I could be homeless you know or or I could I could, yes, I could rely on friends, but they weren't necessarily my family, my, my soul family, where I would feel good to receive from them. So then COVID happened and I was working a lot and the guy I'd come to the island with, we, I am very good at manifesting things. So we were on the plane here and we weren't even sure if we were going to stay together. But then I put on my Facebook, like, Hey, I'm coming. And Uh, A friend of mine was like, hey, I have this beautiful villa right on the beach. We have a maid who cooks and cleans for us and does our laundry. There's six bedrooms. 
and there's one last bedroom left. It's the master bedroom that opens to the pool, which is right on the beach. And you're coming with your boyfriend. We didn't tell people we were breaking up at that moment. So you're coming with your boyfriend. We would love to give you this place. And I had written down like how much I wanted to pay. And she was, and she had met, she already had said like, this is exactly the rent to contribute. And it was the exact number. And the guy I was with was like, how do you manifest this stuff? And I'm like, cause it feels really good in my body. And I'm so excited to receive this. And so we moved into this beautiful villa and then the guy, the guy that I was, had just broken up with, he ended up getting with my friend who we had said we were breaking up to each other, but not to them. And he ended up, I don't know, I think we're not even going to go into his, his psychology, but what happened on paper was he ended up falling for my friend in the villa or whatever Um, and then they collectively asked me to leave the villa. And so, and this is on the island when it was actually, it was full lockdown. There was no COVID on the island, but they, the Thai people were really scared. And so they were going around and like, um, asking for photocopies of all our passports and marking who was in each house. So in case a COVID case happened, they could track it. Right. So we, it was actually illegal to move out of your house at this point. And so they were asking me to move out and I, I didn't even know where to go. And one of my best friends in the whole world, I love you as Adora. She had just um, gotten this cute little bungalow near the beach and it had a day bed in it. And she had, ha- she had received so much help through her life because she was also synchronistically raised in the same cult as me. And we met on the island and like we had met like two weeks before and she was like, Brittany, I, I made this house because I got this house with an extra day bed and an extra room because I wanted to always have a space for women to host women and empower them. And I didn't think this was going to be you, but like, if you need this, cause like, you know, people look at me and they're like, wow, she's so powerful. She doesn't need anything. And I'm like, yes, but sometimes I do, you know, sometimes I do. Need, everyone needs stuff. Um, and so she was like, of course I want you to come stay here. Get out of that house. It sounds so toxic. And so I packed my bags. I left, I went and stayed with her. And then through synchronistically, like a bungalow opened near her. And, and then a lot of our other friends ended up moving near us. And, and we just had this little bubble of like soul family that was building. And still I kept working and I had just broken up. Like I had this very traumatic thing that just happened where I felt, you know, like, yeah, it was traumatic for me. Let's just put it that way. But I still was like, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? What does this show me of how, what I want in my masculine? Like I want good men in my life that really take care of me and honor me. Even when we break up, they're still like wanting to make sure I'm okay. And this guy did none of those things. And I was like, okay, this is what I don't want. (laughs) And I just cried a lot and I worked a lot and and still my, my soul and my body was like, you need to slow down and come into yourself. And so then I got in my only ever scooter accident I've had. And, and then I kept working still. And then I got dengue. If you don't know what dengue is, it comes, it's a, it's kind of similar to COVID. I would actually say dengue is worse than COVID. I don't want to classify these things because I've had COVID and dengue was worse in my body than COVID. They call it the bone breaking disease. You get It's from a mosquito bite. It's like a, a viral disease from a mosquito bite. And uh, they call it the bone breaking disease because you literally feel like your bones are breaking on the inside. It's so painful. It's similar to how I felt in New York when I had to take morphine and I had that really bad thing. And, and then suddenly, and it also completely fucks with your mind and your emotions. And so I couldn't work anymore. And I, around the same, these couple of years, I started to attract in my soul family. I didn't know that's what it was at the time because I wasn't ready necessarily to receive them all the way because it's still, you know, it takes a lot to receive. It's not about if that you can have everything you want. It's like, are you willing to receive it? Are you, do you feel safe in your body to receive it? And I was the universe was giving me all these hard times in order for me to realize that I could receive it because I didn't have a choice. So I remember talking to these people that had now, I call them my godparents. I recorded a podcast with Richard. You'll, you can listen to that in my podcast and they're basically my parents, you know, and I talked to them about what was going on and they said, Richard was like, Brittany, when was the last time that you took a break for a month and you gave yourself permission to not work and to not have to worry about making money? And I just started crying like uncontrollably because I was like, 
never like basically since I moved out of my house and like I had you know I'd worked during the summer at coffee shops before I moved out and my parents ended up taking my money and like my dad took my car because they're crazy and that's a whole other situation and and so I was like even from when I moved out I had this scarcity mindset of like I need to take care of myself and the people that are supposed to take care of me are not there so I need to do it for myself and so he was like, maybe, like, do you have enough money right now that you could take a month off? And I was, I looked at my bank account. And I was like, yeah, like realistically, yes, I could. And he was like, do you want to take a month off and just give yourself time to recover? And I was like, yes. Like I was a full body. Yes. And also I didn't really have a choice. I was like injured from my scooter accident. I couldn't really think like dengue makes you, your head super cloudy. I was basically sick for a whole month from dengue. And then it took me a whole month to come back to myself. And this, I'll tell you the emotional reality I was in is even when I started feeling better physically, I would wake up in the morning and put on classical music and just cry for like hours because I, was, I felt like I was finally meeting my inner feminine. I was finally allowing myself to let all the sadness and all of the, all of the pain that had come up and stored in my body because I wasn't giving it space to move through me. I was allowing it all to move through me and giving myself lots of time to rest and receive. And, and Issa, my best friend, she would come over her and my friends, Dan and Adrian, they all lived nearby me. And they, every single day they would come over and bring me tea and food and like, just really check on me. And I just remember this one point being in bed and being so tired and so weak that I couldn't get out of bed. And so all three of them got into bed with me. I had this big bed and, and they were all just cuddling with me and talking and I was just crying. I still remember this moment because this was the moment that I let my soul family in and I was like, okay, this is safe. I can receive this and just like feeling so much love and feeling so like, grounded in my body and so grounded in this earth and on this timeline and I was like I want to be here I want it I want it I want to be here and it's so beautiful and like and they were like Brittany you, you're always taking care of us like let us take care of you for once and it made them feel so good to take care of me and I was like okay <laughs> okay I'll receive and I just felt so like I've never been pregnant, so I don't know what it's like, but when my friends who are pregnant, they, they tell me that it's like everything is just so beautiful and so tender and like, and you just feel everything. And this is how I started to feel. It was like, I just felt like pregnant all the time with like love and connection. And, and this is when I started to really come into my feminine and I was like, okay, this is, this feels good, you know, and I was receiving a lot and the universe was giving me even more. And then and then I started, I'm, I've always been studying manifesting and like, you know, law of attraction stuff. And so I was like, okay, universe, I want to attract in a villa where I can have like my soul family and like we can live together, we can do events. And, and so Issa and I did some magic mushrooms one day we were in the water with, with my dog and like, and I was just like, Issa, I want to live together. I don't want to live even like just your neighbor. I want to live together. And she was like, yeah, I want that too. Like, yeah, I think I'm ready for this too. And so we just like did this little manifesting session of like what it would feel like to live together and what we would love the villa to have so we could do all these events and host our soul family. And then within two weeks we had the villa and we had our soul family there. And then that was such a beautiful summer of 2020. We hosted so many events, so many parties, so many stargazing nights and our villa was like right on the beach so it was like five, four or five bedrooms we had a maid that cooked and cleaned for us and it had a it was like the villa and then the pool and then a lawn and then the beach with kayaks and so it was just our playground we just played and when I was in that mode of that villa I, I was doing I'm always doing something I'm always doing like five things but at the time I was doing a lot of masterminds for women because I'd done these in corporate and I wanted to empower women entrepreneurs. So I was hosting like women's mastermind circles, but I was mixing it with my women's circles that I also did on the side. So it was like half spirituality, half business. And I'm like, this really resonates with me. Like as women, we can be in our feminine and connect to each other and also, you know, figure out how to make more money together, figure out how to follow our highest excitements together. Like we can have it all. Um, and then I was like, okay, I want to manifest. Like, I'm just like going to start playing with this you know and so I was like okay universe I want to mass manifest fifteen thousand dollars just for being me this month just for being in my feminine and um 
And it was just so funny. I did. And oh, okay, one thing I will give you a tip on manifesting: do not tell people that you are manifesting things if they, if you know and you can feel in your body that they do not get it, and if they're going to lower your vibration. So I, especially when you're first starting out, if you're just first starting out manifesting and being in your feminine and listening to your body, I this is a very sacred thing. This is your relationship with yourself. This is you dating yourself. That is not something that you mix with other people's energy. That is something you protect and you honor within your body. And so I sat down and I did this journaling. I was like, okay, I want $15,000 just for being me and just for following my highest excitement and creating connection and community and being fully in my feminine. And, rec- and, then, and then how will it feel when I receive this money? And I was like, oh, it feels so good. And I can rest all the time when I need to. And that will give me even more energy to do everything I want to do. And, and I was like, okay, how do I want it to come in? And I'm like, I want it to come in in a way where I'm like, this is fuck, this is from the universe. Like this is a, this is the universe telling me I am on path. And, and so I, I, and I said, I want it to come in the month of June. This is June of 2020. Like everyone is like losing their job. Like people are freaking out around the world. We're here playing a couple We didn't have COVID on the Island. We had like a, a national lockdown we had to follow but we didn't have COVID. So we were all just like playing and taking lots of acid and connecting and building our soul tribe and manifesting all these beautiful things. And, and so I said, okay, I'm going to test this out. I would love for this to come in the month of June because like universe, this is me building trust with myself being in my feminine. This is me building trust with you that you will always take care of me. And, and then I let it go. And then I like released all expectations of how it would come in. And then, (laughs) <laughs> and then uh June passed and I, the money wasn't there and I was just like no I know I still know it's I had just had this feeling I was like very intuitive about it. I was like I feel like the money is there like what okay I'm just gonna trust I'm just gonna trust and then I had multiple people um give me these hints of something I needed to do and so whenever I always listen like when I'm always responding to what the universe is speaking through other people so like three different people one day was like you need to or like this helped me make money or this helped da 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 and so I um (laughs) I applied for this program that I could do I'm not going to go into it because it's a very specific thing it's not even important but the important thing is I applied for this program in June and then I let it go because I was waiting for it to get approved and stuff like this and then I got approved for it and then they give me this like bank account for the grant that I got and and I was like okay like you know I whatever money comes in through this I'm super grateful for it and and then so the reason why so anyways I applied for it in June the money had come in June but I didn't get the access to the bank account until July and so when I logged in on in July, I logged into the little bank account and it said, I'm not even joking. It's, oh, sorry, a door closed because of the wind. Um, it said $14,995. And I stood up from my laptop. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like looking around like, is anyone else understanding what's going on right now in, in my timeline? And I kind of just like, I was in a coffee shop and I backed away from my laptop. I just kind of looked at the screen and I was like, okay we are on this level now and I just received it and it felt so good in my body I like fully was receiving this and I was like okay so this this is all possible and I and it felt so good and I felt so safe and I felt so in my body and I was like we can really fucking have everything we want And also I was reading this book on manifesting money and it's all about very much being in your feminine and being intuitive. And I'll, I'll put the link for it in this, in the podcast thing. And I have all of my friends read this book and it really helps them manifest money because it's all about following your highest excitement. So it's funny when Faraday is, my boyfriend's always talking about Bashar and like following your highest excitement because I feel like the universe led me to that same message. It's all the same message up there in the big cosmos, but I got the message in very much in a feminine way that felt really good in my body and I really listened to it and I would love for everyone to read this book um it's also someone who's channeling something from the universe um so yeah that is a little story about 
how I came. So from there, I was just like fully in my feminine. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to follow whatever feels good. It's going to lead me to wherever I need to go. And I'm always going to listen to my body. And I'm always going to honor whatever feels good in my body. And so, yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. Just one second. Okay, so if I want to give you some solid tips on being more in your feminine, I hope that story helped. Um, here are, wait, let's let's just take a deep breath. That was a that was a lot. <sighs> if you know me well, you know that I love taking deep breaths and coming into my body. If you see me with my close friends, we are all doing group hugs all the time and taking deep breaths and and humming when we it's so interesting when you take a deep breath and then you hum on the exhale because then you literally match vibrations with each other and then I can see when we do this around like other people who are not used to this and they're just like what the fuck cuz like from a 3D reality it looks weird uh, or I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I think it's cool. Um, but from a vibrational energetic level, I can see people kind of like waking up. They're like, Ding! something there is different. Something is aligned. Something is good. And they can tell that they also want it. <sighs> so I invite you to, when you're with your friends, to invite them to like hold their hand or give them a hug and be like, do you want to take a deep breath with me? And like, Take a deep breath together and on the exhale, hum together. Like a hmm. Because you'll see, like, I can feel the vibrational match. It happens. And this is something that I feel is really important that the feminine is so powerful at and that we need to bring more into this reality on this timeline is listening to our bodies and encouraging other people to listen to their bodies and creating safe space because as imagine the feminine imagine me being a woman being around Faraday and I'm like Faraday how do you feel in your body right now and I invite you to ask me how I feel in my body right now and he's like oh because he's like da, 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 you know and like I'm so excited. Da, da, da. And then when I'm like, let's drop in, let's drop into our bodies. And then he's like, oh, this feels really good. Like, Why don't we do this more? And this is the power of the feminine. It's like not waiting for the masculine to create space for us to drop into our bodies. It's calling this in and being like, I, this is how it feels in my body right now. And I would love to see how it feels in your body. And let's breathe together. And like, let's hold hands. Something that I learned through my studies over the years is called co-regulation. And I maybe we'll talk about this in every podcast because I want to imprint it in everyone. That when we are little and we are babies, we cannot regulate our own nervous systems. And this is why when babies cry, the parents put them on their chest and the baby literally lines up its heartbeat with the heartbeats of the parents. And this is why you're also imprinted with your fucked up parents' nervous system. But we can heal this, and we are. Um, or not. You know, my mom had a very calm nervous system. My dad, no. But my dad, my mom always had a calm nervous system, always was touching us, always was hugging us. And this is what I call caring touch. This is what it feels like to be in tribe. And as we get older, we... Like society has made us feel that that caring touch, that co-regulation. So self-regulation is when you can regulate your own nervous system. It's when you are upset and if for whatever reason you're imbalanced. It could be too high, like too going, 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 or too low, 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 like where you're sad or happy. It could be either direction. And you can come back to your happy medium. And everyone has their own happy medium of what that baseline is for them. That is self-regulation. Our society makes us believe that we have to always self-regulate. And this is not actually what happens in our bodies. This is inaccurate. This is not reality. <laughs> our reality as these, we chose to be in these 3D bodies, to be on this timeline, to have connection. We are, wi as Brene Brown says, we are wired for connection. And so we are meant, even as adults, especially as adults, to have co-regulation. This is where... When you are a little bit off balance in the plus or the minus, you come into regulation. You come into a safe environment with someone you love, someone in your tribe. 
and you can come back to your own balance. You do not come to their vibration. You are hosted in order to find your balance. And you can do this by in, when you're sitting with a friend who's very grounded and part of your soul family and makes you feel safe. You can say, this is my friends and I do this all the time. Hey, can I have some co-regulation right now? Do you have space to host me in this? And then the person can say, yes, I have space. Or no, I don't have space now, but I can do it later. Or da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. But when it's aligned... You can co-regulate. You can do this on a phone call. Just be like, I just need to be hosted in my emotions. This is the feminine. We are supposed to have the emotions go through us. They are not supposed to get rid of. They are not supposed to be suppressed. They are supposed to move through us in a very beautiful way. Because this is how we learn. This is how we experience our reality. It's all emotions. It's so beautiful. And this is also the masculine. The men want this. They want to be invited to do this. And we are the leaders of this. We are the divine feminine leading the way on showing this and creating this safe space. And so when I'm with my friends, if I'm out having... A, a, a coconut or whatever I'm like can I hold your hand can we co-regulate and this this is what I call caring touch it's not sexual it's like it's like literally you're touching your tribe and you're like we are together because our bodies are still imprinted with the genetic imprint of being back in the tribe when if you are kicked out physically literally are you if you're not part of your tribe then you can get eaten or, you know, another tribe can come kill you or whatever, whatever. Like we have this somatic experiencing. Somatic means the sensations happening in your body. Our somatic experiencing needs to have co-regulation. It literally needs to have this caring touch from our tribe all the time, all the time. This is what we need. This is the baseline. And imagine how sad it is that most of us go through our lives thinking that oh i'm only allowed to like really hug or touch like my partner or my 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 blood family you know my and even then a lot of times that's like starting to in society that's like <laughs> i just i notice this because what's interesting is my mom always did this caring touch with me and my sisters and i to the point where i felt touched out like i had too much touch and it wasn't sexual it was caring touch it was like i love you i want to hug you i want to like be around you and cuddle with you And I had so much of that growing up that I was like, oh, I kind of want my own energy because of its own thing of like the touch that came from my family also meant being in the cults and also meant having to be brainwashed and all these things. So I was imprinted with how it felt to have caring touch, but I wanted it to be with my soul family on my vibration. My chosen family is what I call them. But then I look around and I see a lot of my friends where they have families that really love them, like blood families, like the families they were born into. And they love, they all love each other, but they're, they're not like touching each other. They're not doing this caring touch. They're not even like verbally telling each other. Some of them have a hard time even verbally saying they love each other. And I'm like, what? Like if I, if my family was here, like I would be like all over them, like touching them and da da da. And so what I realized is I, I just started encouraging and this is guys and girls. Everyone can do this, but especially the feminine encouraging creating these safe spaces where we initiate this we're like hey can I hold your hand like I just want it helps me with regulate my nervous system and it makes me feel really good in my body and that's all it means is I just want to I just want to hold hands with you and like be friends or like if you're with your family like can I get a hug or like mom can we just hug for a minute and like with my mom we would like watch movies and just cuddle and like you know I would tell her all the things I wanted to manifest in the world and she would tell me Brittany you can do anything I believe in you you can do anything you are so powerful and she would always be hugging me and telling me how beautiful I was to the point where I was like mom I don't really feel like that counts because (laughs) I now laugh at this because I would be like, mom, you tell me this so much that I feel like this is just what moms tell their kids. Like, I don't know, like, am I really beautiful or is this because you're just my mom and you're supposed to tell me this? And then I went out in the world and I realized, wow, other people's moms do not tell them those things. Other people's moms are not safe spaces to co-regulate, you know? And then I became very grateful for my mom and very grateful for everything she imprinted in me and like this like superpower she gave me just through her own embodiment, through her own being in the divine feminine. Like when I would come home from school, I'm not even joking, my mom would have like a plate of cookies just baked and she'd just be done painting or sewing a dress for me or, you know, working out in her garden where she'd like sing to her vegetables and like 
And she was just so in the feminine and so wanting to create this beautiful reality bubble where we felt safe and we could be in our emotions. And I only have sisters, so my sisters and I were very, like, in that way, felt very safe, you know? And then I had the opposite of that with my dad, which was, like, a very unsafe masculine who was very controlling, very abusive, very derogatory, would call me a slut and a whore. And I was, like, a virgin until I got married, and I was very confused. (laughs) But at least I saw both sides, you know? Okay, so I'm going to read off some tips that have helped me to really drop into my feminine. These are things that I've learned here. A lot of things I've learned here on Copanyang. If you really want to drop in your feminine, I invite you to come to Copanyang because it is a very safe place. Like when I went out to Europe this summer and I was there for a couple months traveling around and visiting some really good close friends of mine and also meeting some soul tribe who I'm so grateful for to have met. And a lot of the women that I met, they were just like telling me all these things like, basically that their families wanted to put them on antidepressants because they were feeling very emotional and and like some of them like didn't feel safe they didn't they were having eating issues and i would like the ones that were having problems like eating enough i would ask them like do you feel safe in your body when you're eating and they just look at me like what and i'm like yeah like when you sit down to eat the environment that you're in do you feel safe And they're like, no one has ever asked me this. Like my parents take me to psychiatrists and they're trying to like do all these things mentally. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably because you don't feel safe, you know? And, and this is something that has like resonated so much. And I, and I just kind of pick this up somatically, like through the sensations in my body and through my own intuition and through being on Copanyang where everyone is listening to their bodies and we have so many women's circles and uh, you know we have a facebook group just for the girls on the island and everyone's like are you guys feeling this energy that's moving and some of it's almost too woo -woo for me and i love all of it and i accept all of it and i honor all of it and so i've just been telling a lot of these women come to copanyang you're not crazy you're actually the most sane person here because you're waking up to your divine feminine the world is trying to make you it's there's no it's not a safe place for that right now and we're we're moving in that direction and we need to come together as a core and get stronger together and feel safe to be in our feminine and Copenhagen is definitely that place for me I'm sure there's other places around the world this is the one that brought called to me and I'm so happy to be here and be a leader in the community and to create these spaces and I would love all of you guys to come here and lead it with me we need all of us this is a calling please come <laughs> I would love for you to come lead this with me Okay, so some things that help me drop into my feminine is literally allowing myself to follow my joy. This is the opposite of being in the masculine. The masculine is like, mentally, I have this to-do list and I need to do one, two, three. And yes, of course, I like to be accomplished. If you want to try to drop into your feminine, I invite you to give yourself permission to have a day where you completely flow. You wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm only going to follow my body today. Like there's nothing on the schedule. There's maybe some things that you're like excited to do, but you're going to follow at every single moment. You're going to flow with what feels good in your body and what brings joy to you and satisfaction and makes you feel peaceful and like all of the yummy good things in your body. I started doing these on the island and I was also (laughs) microdosing on a tiny bit of acid very scientifically. I have friends who are super into psychedelics and helped me feel safe in order to try them. I had never really worked with them before. But I was taking a very small dose of acid where I... And also I have microdose on mushrooms. I tried both. I found that acid really helps me with my mental process. It's more masculine. But it also can help you be in the flow more of what your higher self and what your higher mind wants and da-da-da. And then mushrooms is very feminine. It's very grounding into your emotions. So when I'm feeling intuitively that I want to wake up and just be, I'm like, ooh, there's something that wants to move through me. And then I just take a tiny bit of mushrooms. And it's so tiny that you do not even know you're on them. This is what I, this is the kind of microdose I'm talking about. It's not a, you're not tripping or anything. It's like you're using them for medicine. And I would just allow myself to flow. So whether it's on mushrooms or acid, I would very small dose. And I I do this to this day. That was helping me get started because I had so much programming in my brain that when I woke up in the morning, I wanted to have a flow day. I was, my ego and my, my doubts were already like, but you are not worthy of this. You need to go do this thing. And then you can feel worthy of receiving. And I was like, fuck all of that. I don't believe that anymore. I just received $15,000 from the universe. I'm going to just try this. And it was so amazing. I, I would synchronistically run into like the people that I needed to talk to and I would 
I would go get a massage. I would go to the beach and just swim like a mermaid and, and I would just rest as much as I needed to. And then I, and then because of the synchronicity of everything flowing, like I would accomplish, if we're going to put this in quotations, more in the 3D than if I had sat there in the morning and been like, okay, here's my to-do list. This is what I'm going to get done today. And the most important thing is that I felt so good in my body and that was radiating out everywhere. And like people were stopping me in the street and being like, you are, you are glowing today. You, you look so beautiful. And I would just be like, okay, receive. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And I'd like give them up. If I wanted to, I would give them a hug. If I didn't want to, I'd just be like, oh, thank you. That really means a lot. And I would just like create more connection by my receiving. So remember, this is the key to being in the feminine. You receiving creates good energy around you. You receiving creates connection around you by appreciating and honoring and being grateful for everything that's coming in. That's being in the feminine. So, yeah, I, I touched on this before, but being in the feminine, we are here to listen to our bodies and to create safe spaces to help the masculine listen to their emotions and their bodies. And it was interesting because the first step for me was, and I've always done this, I organized a women's festival when I lived in Chiang Mai, um, specifically for empowering women. It was like, my first step was, I was a feminine who didn't necessarily feel safe being around the masculine or empowering the masculine or creating safe space for the masculine. I was like, the masculine is unsafe. And so what I did was I started creating safe spaces for women. And because I was very in my masculine at the time, the women that were attracted to me were business leaders, women, women who were go-getters and also very much in their masculine. And I don't think that, I think that you can be balanced in the masculine and the feminine, right? I think being, going out and being a go-getter is amazing. I think it's so good. This is who I am. I'm very much in my masculine. But it was imbalanced to the point where I didn't feel joy. I didn't feel good in my body. I wasn't honoring what my body needed. And so me organizing these women's circle masterminds where we talk about business, I was kind of like drawing in the women who were just like me. And I was creating these safe spaces. Yes, we were going to talk about business, but we were also were going to talk about our feelings. We were also going to connect with each other. And maybe we're going to pull some tarot cards and talk about the moon or whatever, you know, like it progressed and we got more and more in our feminine. And I had a, I also had my own personal women's circle that a friend of mine started on the island and brought a lot of us like core women who were like leading things on the island together. And we would, the group met every single week for six months. And every single week, it we would rotate through who would lead. So every woman got to be a leader in it and they got to like, you know, do it in their flavor and be like, I, I just tried this thing. I would love all of us to try it together. And some of it would be journaling. Some of it would be we, us going to nature. And we, at every, every time the core thing that we would do is we would have some sort of sharing where we would all share about what was going on for us that week, what was going on for our bodies that week and just honoring being in our bodies together in tribe. And the next step after I felt really safe with doing this, for the feminine was I started creating safe spaces for the masculine because you know I'm not there's so many things I could say about the feminist movement all these things all I'm saying is we are all here things have happened in the past in our history and now women are waking up to their powers and I think most men are actually really good men and they just don't know how they're even, I feel bad for them. Like they don't even know how they're supposed to show up in the world. Like I've talked to so many beautiful men that are like, I don't want to be like a bad guy, but I don't know how to be a good, I don't know what being a good man means in today's world. I don't know how to show up for the feminine. I don't know how to take care of my girlfriend because she wants to do everything herself and she doesn't want to receive from me. And then they just feel like, where is their place in the world, you know? And men are here, the masculine is here to create safe spaces for the feminine to unfold. Like the, we are the living art. We are the destination. We are everything. We are just like this glorious goddesses. And the masculine are their own gods and they are their own divine creatures. And it feels really, if you, if you, you will know a good man when he feels so excited to create a safe space for you. And to create a safe space for you to be in your emotions and for you to unfold and for you to be your feminine flowy self that can a lot of times is very chaotic and disorganized and I don't really like tech things and all this stuff. And so the, the masculine, like, uh, um, my boyfriend helped me set up all the podcast equipment today and he was like setting up all the cameras for me and like, 
Um, he's like, I'm going to upload it for you and edit it. Like, I just want you to get your vibration out there. Like you have so many amazing things to say. And I was just like, wow, this is the divine masculine is creating this beautiful bubble for me to just broadcast my vibration. Cause for me, it feels really yummy in my body to share all of these things with you. I feel so powerful and so in my feminine and I don't necessarily like to do the tech things afterwards and upload it. And so he's like, I feel so good about doing that. And I'm like, I feel so good about receiving this. And then the energy just keeps going back and forth in this very beautiful way that feels so good for both of us and it keeps amplifying. And then more of us, we get more and more both of us in our power. And to me, this is the divine masculine, divine feminine, you know, co-creating a very beautiful reality together where we're both in our powers and we're both going and doing um, epic shit in the world, you know? So after you feel safe in your body and only if it calls to you, the invitation is to create safe spaces for men around you, the, the good men in your life, you know, start appreciating them, start watching them and observing the things that they do for you and honor it. I remember when I was at the flow state retreat, <laughs> okay, this is a funny story. So, um, we were, I was at this retreat in Austria that Faraday, my boyfriend, organizes. And um, we were all going to take acid one day together. And synchronistically through the universe, one of the friends that I had connected with, she had to leave the day everyone was going to take acid. Like she was going home for whatever reason. And so I woke up one morning and I was like, she was like, me and one other, two other people are going to take acid today. And I was, I just was like, my whole body was like, I want to take it with you guys. And so what ended up happening was we, the, the four of us had this beautiful connecting moment. We were meditating together and just really allowing the energy to move through us. And then the rest of the day, I basically was flowing through the house with like 20, 25 beautiful soul family. And they were just doing normal things like cooking together, going and playing spike ball in the park, singing together on the balcony. And I just felt so in my feminine. I was like, wow this is so amazing and like I love everyone and I was just like honoring everyone and like hugging everyone and and getting all of us to feel safe to drop into our bodies and then um, towards the evening I was like I feel really called to cook and I love the soul family and I felt like I really wanted to do this together and if you know me very well you will know <laughs> that for most of my life I felt very unsafe to cook this is a very interesting thing because my mom and my grandmother are very, very, very good cooks. Like to the point where like they have family recipes. My mom used to run a bakery in California for fun because she loves baking and like bringing, putting her love into her food and all this stuff. And my grandfather and my dad, both like my grandfather would do it with my grandma. So I would see this every summer when we go up to my grandparents' house. They would, and my dad would do this with my mom. They would sit down at the f dinner table and be like, okay, what's wrong with dinner tonight? And they would just sit there and criticize my grandma's. My grandpa would do it with my grandma and my dad would do it with my mom. Just criticize the food and just t completely tear it apart instead of receiving it and being like, wow, this is really nice. It was really epic food. And I just looked at that and I was like, that's not safe. I don't want to cook. I'm not going to fall. That's a trap. And so when I, even when I was married for six years, I never cooked. And I, I didn't. My mom was always trying to teach me to cook. She's the best cook ever. And... I didn't want to learn. I just felt like, no, I'm going to go read my books and learn what I need to learn about the outside world so I can get out of here. And that was what I was interested in. And then on acid and feeling very in my feminine, I was like, oh my God, I am like with my soul family, my chosen family. And my whole body just wanted to make food with them and like create this beautiful environment with them. And and so, and then I, like, I, I, I don't really know how to cook, right? Like I'm learning. Um, I think intuitively women actually know how to cook very well. Uh, it's just more of a letting go of the programming. Um, and so I called on some of the other women. So they were not on acid, right? So I called on them and I was like, hey, I would like to make a meal for everyone. Do you guys want to help me? And so they came and they sat around the table with me and we were all chopping food. And then the men were just kind of hanging out in the kitchen and living room area and I started asking them, like, hey, Jonathan, will you, get, will you get something from the kitchen for me? And and then he would get up and go get it and, like, bring it to us. And I'd be like, thank you so much for getting that. I really honor you and appreciate you. And I wasn't doing an exaggeration. I really meant it. I was like, wow, thank you. And then he was like, thank you for seeing me. Like, thank you for, like, 
like he, I think he even joked, he was like, finally someone sees me. And I'm like, oh, okay. This was also when I was learning. I was like, these are really good men and they just want to be honored and appreciated. And then I was talking to some of the women at the table. I was like, this is, this is being in the feminine, you know, like we can just be, and we can just enjoy and talk to each other and make really yummy food and put our love into the food. And the men can go and help us get it and like help us cook it. And we can do this together and we can honor them. So here is a really good tip for you to be more in your feminine is anytime someone around you in your life, man or woman, gives you something, receive it in a way where you're really saying, you're saying how it feels in your body. So you're like, wow, thank you so much. This feels really good in my body. Thank you. Like it makes me feel really good. It makes me feel yummy. It makes me feel like connected to you. And, and, and if, especially if it's a man say like, I really honor you for doing this. Like I really appreciate having you in my life. Thank you so much. And you will see the magic unfold. I'm telling you, cause this is not, this is not foo-foo. This is also not manipulating. This is just bringing good energy into the world. Like this is what we're made for, you know? And I also like for this whole last year, I have really feel, felt my divine masculine counterpart coming into my life. And w so in, in preparation for this, like, what does that mean? Right. I basically was like, I want a soulmate. I know my soulmate is out there. I know it's possible to have someone as, ma as amazing as me in the world and that we can combine our energies and make even more amazing energy in the world. And so I started really trying to figure out how to be in my feminine because I had a really good uh, coach one time tell me that the masculine, like we are all mirroring each other. So you will only have a masculine show up in your life in the way that you treat yourself. So just let me repeat that. The men that you attract into your life is an outside representation of how you internally, your, your internal masculine feels about you. So in the past, I've had men who are violent towards me. I've had men who don't treat me very well. I've had men who don't appreciate me, don't take care of me very well. And I was always really frustrated by this because I was like, I expect this. And then I checked myself and I was like, do I honor myself? Do I slow down and take care of myself? In, like, so I'm on Copenhagen where massages are really cheap, you know? It's like 10 euros for like an amazing, amazing epic massage. And they can even come to your house. You don't even have to leave your house. And so I made this, uh, I just got through a meditation one time. I got this download. Where I was like, I love massages so much and I do not give them to myself enough. Like for me, being in my feminine is receiving a massage often. And so I made this game for myself. I was like, okay, Here's a game. This is going to be me dropping into my feminine and allowing my masculine to take care of me. My own internal masculine was to get a massage every single day for a week. And I had that download like months ago and it was so hard for me to do. I would, I would get a massage like two days in a row, three days in a row. And then I would come up with an excuse or I'd allow myself to be too busy to get, to receive a massage. That might sound like crazy to other people. But for me, this was like really doing the work in it and and then when I got back from Europe is this download came to me before I, the summer when I got to when I was before I went to Europe I went to Europe for a couple months came back and I was like mm -mm, this I need to do this now and I even told some of my close girlfriends can you hold me accountable for this and so they would check in with me like did you get a massage today and and I did it every day for a week and it was so amazing and I could feel myself more and more dropping into my body and like more and more feeling really good in my body and, and then like when I did that, like all of a sudden, like these really beautiful men were showing up in my life because on the island, some of the women here are like, com sometimes they complain that the men here are not in their masculine very much or, you know, where are the good men or whatever, whatever. There's all only fuck boys here. And I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Cause I have such amazing men in my life and I appreciate them and I honor them and I thank them every single day. And sometimes I'll wake up and I, I'm just feeling extra love like for no reason like no for no quote-unquote reason but like it's it's spilling over and I will just message especially knowing that my divine masculine was coming into my life I was messaging my cho every day I tr try and message my chosen family I have a little icon in my phone like an emoji next to them in my whatsapp and I try and 
share the energy with them every single day. And I was giving extra energy to all the divine masculine in my life and just sending them messages like, thank you so much for showing up in my life. And thank you for always taking care of me and always being there for me. And they would just write back like, wow, this was so nice to receive this. Thank you for this message. And of course, I'm always like, what else can I do? How like this basically this message is giving me more energy and I want to show up for you more. And I was just like, okay, (laughs) thank you. And like, yeah, maybe you can help me with this. But most of the time it was just like, no, I just I just wanted to honor you, you know, and then naturally the energy just keeps going back and forth in a really beautiful way. So everyone has those different versions of what feels good in your body. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you go get a massage every day. I'm saying like, find something that feels really good for your body that either brings you satisfaction, peace, makes you feel successful, like makes you feel really good in your body and dropped in and give yourself a little homework to do that. Again, do it intuitively. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Always listen to your body and your own feminine and set yourself a little game of trying to do that for a certain period of time that you intuitively know will help you to get to the next level and help you program your masculine that it can take care of you and that you can oh sorry the door the wind is scaring me because the door is shutting um that the, your masculine can take care of you and you will start seeing externally this is reflected outward to all the beautiful men in your life and women i'm not saying i'm just this podcast is specifically about dropping into your phone and this is why i'm focusing on this okay so When I was in Europe, I think some of my last couple things that I really needed to upgrade within myself was the vibration of my own coming into my own divine feminine. And intuitively, again, a lot of my stuff comes intuitively. I was at the Flow State Retreat in Austria and all the girls were making these bracelets that had like words on them. And um, one girl made one that said safe. And I was like, oof. And she also, I was just talking, I was like, this is when I first had taken the acid and I was talking to a girlfriend in the kitchen about feeling safe in her body. And then she looked up and she was like, Brittany, <laughs> Michelle was like, this is what I make. And she just holds it up and it says safe. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. like, like I'm just like had this moment where it was like the universe is aligning like ding and like everything was aligning. And then, so in the next couple of days I was like, okay, what should I, like, I want to, I want to hold this vibration on me. I want to remind myself. And what I found for me, everyone's recipe for dropping into the body and coming into the divine feminine is different. For me, mine was I needed to feel safe in my body. I needed to feel at home in my body and wherever I was at. So I need to feel safe in my body and also my environment. I need to feel safe at home in my body and wherever I chose to be. And that my energy was precious and my my vibration is so precious and that it is an honor for people to be in my vibration this is where I was at I was like I am vibing at this high level of joy and happiness and I am very protective of this and I'm only going to share this vibration with people who honor it and create safe spaces and help me feel at home and so I, I made one bracelet that said safe and one that said at home one said home and then the last one was joy because I knew that when I felt safe and at home in my body and wherever I was at, I would immediately, the vibration that would go out, my base core line vibration is joy. And it felt so good. And I just was like going through all of Europe with these bracelets on and like, wow, like just having that reminder and that vibration on my wrist every single day really helped me. So I encourage you, if this helps you, just giving you some tips that helped me. Um, So yeah, as another reminder is, it's not about can we have everything we want? It's do we feel safe in our bodies to receive everything that we want? If you do not feel safe, it is already a fuck no. It's already you're not going to be able to receive it. So be gentle with yourself. Create an environment in your body and in your immediate 3D reality that feels really safe for you. And then create an environment that feels you feel at home wherever you go. You feel like you can just lay down and be cozy and be in your feminine. This is the homework. This is what we need to do. And then naturally what will happen, you don't need to force this. this you only need to receive. Naturally what will happen is your emotional reality, your body, everything will just relax. And then you will be able to receive everything that you're calling in. Receive it all in your body in a way that feels really good and really safe for you and really yummy in your body. And then what else do I got here? I have so many funny things to tell you. Yeah, like knowing that my divine masculine was coming, it was so interesting because it was not like 
is he out there? I knew he was out there and I knew I deserved him. And I knew, I knew when we met, we were going to, in the 3d reality, we were going to make epic shit, amazing stuff together in the world. And what I was doing is every single day, especially when I got back from Europe, it was coming so strong to me when I would meditate. It's every morning I would sit in this spot, actually where I'm at right now. If you can see this on video, you'll see where I'm at. I'm in my house. And I would just look out into the jungle and I would light a candle. Maybe I would do some rape and I would just meditate and I would just visualize this person and visualize how it would feel in my body when they came into my life. And I real I was like, wow, this is a lot of energy coming at me. And I realized I needed to ground. I needed to really ground into my body because as women, we are here to allow the energy to move through us. So it is not about, is it possible? It's like, are you grounded in your body? Do you feel safe in your body? Can you host this beautiful connected energy going through your body? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. Um, some things that also always help me is, of course, magic mushrooms. They really, really help me with my feminine. I feel like the most goddess women ever <laughs> when I'm on mushrooms. And it's, I've gotten so many downloads about how to be in my feminine when I've taken them. Please only take them when you feel really safe and you're in nature and you can connect to nature and yourself. Um, being in nature in general is really amazing. This is why I love being on Copenhagen because I'm literally in nature all the time looking at the jungle right now. I take my dog afro to the beach every single morning and every single sunset i'm at waterfalls all the time i'm in the water i'm swimming like we are creatures of nature and connecting to nature helps us connect to our our feminine and really like really really helps us so even if intellectually it doesn't make sense i invite you every single day to go touch a tree to go be in nature in some way to really breathe it in and tell your higher self, your higher mind, I am connecting to nature and I'm bringing this energy into my body and letting the energy move through me and circulate between me and nature. This is such an amazing thing and it's not an intellectual thing at all and that's why it's so beautiful and that's why we are the feminine because we are fucking powerful being our intuitive feminine creatures. Uh, another thing is following the rhythm of your body. So there's something I was watching the other day and it was talking about how Back in ancient times, the rhythm of society moved through the rhythm of the moon cycles, the moon, the actual like moon in the sky, right? And this is why, and then a lot of women would line up, like intuitively, their bodies line up to the moon. And like when I'm on the island here, I see this a lot, like a lot of my women, like my women friends, all of my girlfriends, they're, they're their periods, their moon cycles, whatever you call it, lines up with the full moon or the new moon or whatever moon phase. And it's very cyclical and it's very intuitive and it feels very natural. So this is how societies used to be in ancient times. It was the lunar calendar. They would line up with the moon. And this is very feminine. And this is very powerful because you're very connected to nature. And then suddenly the masculine came in and was like, we are going to have this like this calendar where it's, you know, 12 months a year instead of 13 cycles and it's going to be seven days and we're going to have, you know, this, this, and this, and it's very linear and it's very masculine and it's not flowy and it's not feminine. And when your body is in that rhythm, a lot of time, I would say, at least for myself, that it feels very unnatural for my body because my body moves at a different rhythm. It moves with nature and it wants to flow with nature and it feels very intuitive and very good in my body. So just be aware of that. I'm just going to put that out there. I can talk about that more in another podcast. But um, for me, other things that have really helped me to be more in my feminine is I know that I was a mermaid on a different timeline. So um, being anything related to water, like for a while when I first moved to the island, I would count how happy I was in the day, how satisfied I was at the end of the day by the amount of times I was in water. So in my pool, in the sea, in the waterfall, and I would have I always take a bath every day. And it always made me feel so good. Um, reading a really good book. I love reading. So for me, this is a really good way to receive and just allow myself to like slow down and relax and read. Um, baking and cooking is really amazing, especially when you do it with other friends. Um, singing. I started taking singing lessons here and that's really helped me to activate my voice because as women, we, uh, for many generations, very somatically, very much deep in our bodies and our cells, uh, we have so much to say and our voice sometimes can be constricted because we've had so many other timelines where we have been killed for using our voice and we have been suppressed. And even in today's world, you know, when people 
even in other countries where it is not safe for women to use their voice, even just witnessing that it can f- make us feel constricted in our bodies to use our voice. So singing lessons, singing, being in nature, singing that really activates a lot of the feminine power. Um, journaling, journaling has, I have journaled since I was 12, just intuitively. I had my own reality and my, my family was in a cult. I grew up in a cult and they were, I knew from the beginning, I was like, this is not my reality. And so to keep myself sane every single day, I would journal and I would just like create this own reality bubble within myself. So I was already very, at a very young age, connecting to my own self, connecting to my own feminine. Um, so if you want to get started on some journaling prompts every single morning, I journal, I'll just tell you what I do and you can do whatever you want is I journal about what I'm grateful for. And that just really helps me be in my feminine because it's already like, wow, these are the things I'm already allowing myself to receive in my life. And wow, it's so beautiful. It feels so good in my body. And so <laughs> like, I'm always like, oh, I'm so grateful for my dog. I'm so grateful to live on this island. I'm so grateful for this timeline, everything that's unfolding. Oh, and then like I can feel it in my body, like this energy building of just like juiciness and yumminess. And I feel really good. And then I use that energy to talk about what I would be grateful for for this day. Like if I had a perfect day today, how would I feel today and set an intention of how you want to feel? I think that's way better than setting intention of what you want to do. Uh, and my friend Colville actually helped remind me of this because I got out of the habit of the intention of the feeling. So like today I want to feel really in flow. I want to feel really rested. I want to feel whatever in your body. Talk about that. Um, oh, sorry that the door keeps knocking. Um, okay. Yeah, so another thing was start with your chosen family or people you feel safe to have the energy go back and forth. Um, Start sharing with them your love. So this is a safe space to be more in your feminine. And I do this on the daily. Again, I told you I put an emoji by these people I call my chosen family. And I move through. So yeah, use the opportunity to find some chosen family, call them in appreciate them in your life put little emoji by them in your whatsapp or wherever you message them and then every single day make it an opportunity to reach out to them and even it's just like sometimes i just start off by saying like hey i love you how are you doing and i just move this energy back and forth or if i do have something i really want to share with them that i appreciate about them i say hey i just want to tell you i really appreciate this about you and just like move that energy like we have so much beautiful energy as the feminine and and we have, it's like sometimes so pent up in us that we don't know what to do with it, you know, and then, then that can c- become frustrating, but it's important to have a safe space to start practicing that. Always honor, another one, always honor my, I always honor my body when I'm around other people. Like, what does my body want right now? And this was especially important when I was in Europe because I had been such a bubble in Copenhagen where everyone was co-regulating all the time and feeling very cozy and cuddly. And then I went to Europe and people's, Ooh, people's emotional bodies were just so constricted. I know all of you guys like went through COVID and who weren't on the island and, and it's just like, it was even, they had gone more constricted and I had gone more relaxed. And so the vibrational difference was so strong that, and I, but I always, I, I had always asked the universe, I'm like, I want to feel safe in my body. And so the universe gave me, I call it a Copanyang person, someone who's lived on the island and understands Copanyang. I always had a Copanyang person around me. And so in my everyday reality, I felt I could someone I could co-regulate with because if I had like maybe two days out of the whole three months, two months I was out in Europe where I didn't have a Copenhagen person around me or I didn't have my chosen family around me and I f- could feel the constriction, the unsafeness start to f- to be around me. So it's like really important to create this bubble around you where you feel really safe and dropped into the people and and also to honor in your body if you don't feel good and go home. Like this is something about being in the feminine. When you say, when you honor your body, you never have to intellectualize why you are honoring your body. The only thing you have to say, or the only thing I give you an opportunity to say this, like, cause you're like, well, what do I say? Is my body is telling me that I need to go now. Like I need to go home or I need to get out of here. And this, this is what I need to honor my body. If you say this to someone and they, give you like if they react in a negative way to that they should not be in your life 
You should only have people around you who honor what's happening in your body, just like you would honor what's happening in their body. And if you don't honor what's happening in other people's body and they're sharing it with you, then you need to check yourself and change that because you're creating uns uh, unsafe environment for them as well. And so I just started doing this even more when I got back from Copenhagen because on Copenhagen, everyone knows me. I do a lot of stuff in the community and sometimes when I go a lot of times when I go out people are like oh Brittany and they want that energy you know they're like so excited to come and, I, and a lot of them I love and they are my friends but I only have so much energy I can give and I have so much energy to give my projects and so much energy for this new society I'm building here and da -da 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 -da. I'm like so activated by it right and so I would be out and people would like also this is something you need to know is the more that you create safety around yourself the more people are going to be around you because they feel safe in your aura they feel safe in your energy bubble that you're creating but you need to protect that because um, that's something to be protected because if you just give it away to everyone, you no longer have it for yourself and then you you become feeling unsafe in your body and then it all starts over and gets drained. And this is something that was happening to me before I went to Europe. And when I was in Europe, it was so extreme, the vibrational difference between people's emotional bodies and the somatic things that were happening in their body than what was happening to me, that when I got back from Europe, I started honoring my body even more with the people around me. And I'd be out to eat with people or like, you know, at someone's birthday party and I, my body just started feeling like constricted or it just didn't want to be there, you know, like, yes, these were my friends, but they weren't my close friends. I couldn't co-regulate with them. I couldn't be like, I didn't feel safe to be like, can I hold your hand? I'm feeling a little nervous. I was like, okay. And I would just go up to the person who was hosting or whatever and just be like, thank you so much for inviting me. I really enjoyed coming and supporting you. And also I need to honor my body right now and my body's telling me to go. And they would just be like, oh yeah, cool. Do your thing, you know? And that felt so good and it made me feel so powerful. And I didn't have to say, I didn't want to be here because these people are not vibing with, or, you know, like whatever. I don't like, I don't like this, part. whatever. I don't have to say anything intellectual. I just have to say, or I don't have to, but I choose to say, I'm, I just want to honor my body. And every single time you honor your body and you vocalize that, you're already creating safety for other people. Because if you stay in a situation where your body does not want to be there, you are already creating an unsafe environment for them. Because on a somatic level, on an emotional body experiencing level, we can feel each other intuitively. So if you stay in an environment you're, you, and that vibration gives off, I feel unsafe, then the people around you start feeling unsafe. And then, and then no one knows what the fuck's going on and no one's co-regulating and just goes into the spiral of not goodness. And so the first time someone can check themselves, they're actually creating and like say, I say, I need to go. My body is telling me I need to go. Then that's creating safety for them because you're choosing to honor your body and to move it into an environment where it's safe. And you're also subconsciously training them or consciously or whatever. You're setting an example like, wow, if Brittany can honor her body like that, then I can do this too, you know? And then we create a tribe of people who are all honoring their bodies. And then we all feel really safe because then we, when we are together and we are super excited to be around each other, then that's the vibration that goes off. And that's really good energy to be sharing with each other. And then that's how we amplify our energy. Ooh, I love that one. I'm like, I don't fucking have to tell anyone why I, I want to go. I just go. I just do my thing, you know? And that's something that I had to really unprogram out of myself because, yeah, the way I was raised was not that. It was like people please all over the place. Um, being in your feminine means doing. Uh, <laughs> being in your feminine means being instead of doing. So, just gonna sit that there. Just maybe just journal about what you think that means, what that feels for you in your body, because we have so much programming around having to do something in order to actually receive, and that is the opposite. Of course, it's beautiful to go do things and to take action on what excites us in the world. The feminine, although although already the feminine, and as everyone, we are unconditionally loved by the universe. We don't have to do anything, and especially the feminine, we don't have to do anything. By our being in the vibration of feeling safe and at home, we are already doing so much on an energy level for the people around us. We're creating such a good energy bubble where it feels good to be in the world and it gives purpose to the people around us to keep creating the safe space for us. I'm just checking my notes. One second. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, one more tip someone gave to me was when you are wanting to drop into your feminine, if you have women in your life who are very in their feminine, and you'll know this because they are 
enjoying themselves a lot and they are talking about their feelings a lot and they're really like honoring their bodies and it feels juicy and good to be around them. Hang out with those people more, hang out with those women more. Um, and you know, if you, if you have a coach, that's a, like a woman coach that helps you drop in your body, reach out. I, I also do women coaching. If you want to reach out to me and you want to work with me, I can really help you drop into your body, but whoever be around. And I did this too. Like I have some women in my life that at the time when I was dropping into my feminine, they were more fem, they were more comfortable being in their feminine than I was at that moment. And so I would just hang out with them and be like, what do they do? <laughs> like, what are, I just kind of like watch them and observe. And you know, they would, really be honoring their bodies at all times and really be like, you know, if they needed to go get their hair done, they're like, "Mm, I'm so excited to go get my hair done. And at the time I was like, Oh, I want to get my hair done, but I don't really want to do anything. And I, it's not on my, it's like fucking up my to-do list. And I was like, okay, well they're really enjoying getting there, like whatever it is, you know? And so I would just start taking more joy in doing the things that were more dropping me into my feminine. And it helped me. We learn from each other and it's such a beautiful thing. Um, another thing too is to another thing that really helped me was to get off coffee coffee is very masculine it very much helps you wake up which is great but uh, what I replaced it with is cacao so if you don't know what cacao is you can google medicine ceremony cacao whatever um cacao is basically chocolate but it's not it's not like chocolate that's full of sugar it's chocolate that is activating your heart chakra this might sound woo woo i didn't really understand what cacao was until i came to copanyang because here you can get cacao you can get like my daily drink that i love is iced cacao with peppermint extract and it tastes so good and I, it still has a tiny bit of caffeine but it's more somatic it more drops you into your body than it does bring you up into your head and this is one thing that is I keep saying is like the purpose of this timeline for us is to be awake and dropped into our bodies. And men are very, very, the masculine is very awake. Like the, it's because the awakeness is the intellectual part of us and all of us can have this, but it's easier for men because they're less dropped into their bodies. For women, we our superpower is the embodiment part. We can the the men can help us be more awake, and we can help them be more in their bodies. And it's beautiful. And of course, we can have both. I am awake and embodied, and I want everyone. I want the masculine and the everyone, non-binary, whatever. I want everyone to feel awake and embodied. But as a superpower, women are more in their bodies. So when you drink coffee, you are taking that away from yourself. You are giving yourself a little bit of extra energy maybe, but you are somatically on a body experiencing level, bringing yourself out of your body into your head. So I invite you. Well, how I got off coffee was I started doing half decaf for a while. And then, and then I did the same drink I love, but I made it all decaf and I kind of just tricked my brain like, yes, because so much is placebo. Right. And then eventually I started doing ice ice cacao or cacao you can do it hot or cold whatever but I just want to put that out there um okay a couple more that I really like allow yourself to receive pleasure so in today's world we are very encouraged to again do something in order to receive pleasure this is why I love my play parties because there's no penile penetration no actual sex that happen, like penetrative sex that happens And so it ends up being a lot of women receiving pleasure. And when I saw the shift in the women, especially the women, I mean, the men, it's like everyone, it's super beautiful to take sex off the table and just play and be little kids and, and yeah, be our natural creatures. We're these curious, playful inner children just coming out to play. But when I saw the feminine be like, wow, this is the first time I received pleasure without feeling like obligated or that I needed to immediately return it. And I was like, how does that feel in your body? And they're like, so good. Oh my God, it feels so, so good. And I'm like, what if you did that in everyday life? What if you allowed yourself to receive as much pleasure as you can? And that pleasure can come from getting your favorite drink or getting a massage or taking time for yourself and read anything that brings you pleasure. Because the more you allow yourself to receive pleasure, the more you're radiating the super yummy energy that draws in everything else in your life. Um, There's this really good book that I'm also going to put in there in the podcast notes, which is 
uh, Mama Jean's School of Womanly Arts. And it's this woman in New York City who has a school of basically helping women drop into their feminine. And you can take her courses. Like, I really, I don't, I've never met her personally, but I fully support her work. And it, her book really helped me. And there's a whole book on there about flirting. And it's like, women, we are made to flirt. And flirting, does, again, does not have to equal sexual connection. Flirting is you sharing your happy, beautiful, high vibe vibration with everything. So, so in the book, she has this homework is go out and flirt with everything you see today, everything you find, everything you see. And, and so I was like going out and flirting with like the dogs. I was just like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, my God. I felt my dogs looking at me like, yes, hello. <laughs> and then I was like flirting with the woman at the... It, it, flirting means allowing yourself to share this beautiful feminine energy with the people around you and without it needing to go anywhere. So I was flirting at the woman at the coffee shop. I was flirting with the guy who was fixing my bike. I was just allowing this juicy, yummy energy to overflow to everyone around me. And you know what happens? Magic happens. People are like opening doors for me, giving me extra things. And I'm like receiving even more and allowing it to move through my body and feeling so good and yummy with it. And then the next thing I'll say as a follow-up to that, in order to feel safe to flirt, you need to honor your fuck no. So what's going to happen is like, especially if you're not on Copenhagen and you're out in the world, is people are going to be like, oh my God, does this mean something? Should I ask her for her number? Da, 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 da. And if it is not a fuck yes, then it is a no. And you can also say no in a way that creates more connection, which is, oh wow, thank you so much. I really honor that you want to know, you want my number, you want to go out or that you want something more from this in my body it's a no you know uh, and I need to honor that and then the person's if again if they say something negative towards you honoring your body they already shouldn't be in your life you know and so this is a practice of allowing ourselves to have that beautiful feminine energy overflow in every single way of our lives to flirt with life and to still honor our body that if unless it's a hundred percent fuck yes if someone gives you something you don't want to receive, which is asking you on a date or doing anything for you that doesn't feel good, you also honor that and you honor it as a no and you and you say it in a way that honors your body. Hmm. So the last thing I'll say is to just honor your intuition without having to explain it. As the feminine, we have so much intuitive power and so much of it has been suppressed over the centuries and this is a call to action to honor your body, honor your intuition, honor the energy that's moving through you and to not have to intellectualize it, just honor it. And I will tell you that from my own personal experience, it feels so good and it feels so yummy. And I want this for all of you guys. And for any of the men who are listening to this, I hope that this, you can also create these safe spaces for the women in your life who are like, they really want to drop into their feminine, but it feels a little bit unsafe. And just have an open conversation. Ha both directions, men and women, have an open conversation. Like, hey, I'm practicing this. Hi, I'd love to create this safe space. Like when Faraday asked me out, like officially, like I want you to be my girlfriend. He's like, I want to create a safe space for you. Create such safe spaces for everyone around you. And you make everyone feel so good and so connected. And it is my honor to create this safe space for you. And I want to figure out how to do that more. And I want you to teach me how to help you feel safe and to really help you be in your body. And I was just crying. I was like, this is my divine masculine. I feel so good in my body. Thank you so much, babe, for saying that. I love you so much. <sighs> so... I love all of you and I hope that this helps you and let me know what you think about it and feel about it. I want to know what you feel about it. I want to know how it feels in your body to receive this message and I hope you have a beautiful day. Sending you so much love from Copenhagen.